विवेक चूड़ामणि प्रेजेंटेड बाय स्वयं प्रकाश शर्मा पार्ट टू पार्ट टू कंसिस्ट ऑफ वर्सेस ट्वेंटी एट टू फिफ्टी सिक्स इन दिस पार्ट द फॉलोइंग आर डिस्कस्ड भक्ति हाउ टू अप्रोच एंड क्वेश्चन द टीचर एडवाइस ऑफ द टीचर सम क्वेश्चन आस्क बाय द सीकर डिसाइपल एंड द टीचर बिगेन्स इज रिप्लाई to the questions of the seeker vivek chudamani it should be known that even if a seeker were to have half hearted and mediocre aspirations they may also come to bear fruit when they are increased by the grace of the teacher guru and by the means of renunciation calmness etc calmness and other qualities also have their meaning and importance but they bear fruit only in the person who has an intense spirit of renunciation and who has a burning desire for liberation in a person who has a weak detachment and a weak yearning for liberation the qualities of sam dam and the like become ineffectual they become as ineffectual as the mirage in a desert they are of no use at all among all the instruments and conditions that are necessary for liberation bhakti alone is supreme bhakti alone is paramount a constant attempt to live up to one's own real nature is called single pointed devotion or bhakti which is the supreme unquestioned unmotivated faith and love that seeks no reward there are others who say that bhakti means a constant inquiry into the real nature of one's own self into the real nature of one's own atma a person who has the above mentioned qualifications and who is also anxious to know the self or the atma for redeeming himself from the ignorance he must therefore serve such a teacher with utmost devotion a teacher who is himself well established in knowledge and what are the qualities that a good teacher that a good guru must have he should be well versed in the scriptures he should be sinless he should not be afflicted with any desires he should be a full knower of the supreme and he should be one who has entered into the supreme he should be as calm as the fire that has burnt up all its fuel he should be a boundless ocean of mercy that needs no cause for its expression and it should be an intimate friend of all those who have surrendered themselves to him the seeker should then worship such a guru sincerely and with deep conviction and when the guru is pleased with the surrender with the humility and with the service of the seeker then the seeker should approach the guru and request him to explain all that he needs to know and what does the seeker disciple say to the teacher he says o oh master o oh friend of all those who have reverentially surrendered to you o oh you ocean of mercy i salute you i have fallen into the turbulent sea of change with the direct glance of your eyes which rain nectarine supreme grace please save me from drowning in that sea i am being roasted in the blazing infernal fire of change i am being tossed about by the cruel storms of misfortunes i am terrified 
both without and within, both from inside as well as outside. O Lord, save me from death. I seek shelter in you, for I do not know any other harbour. I do not know any other safe harbour or safe place where I can seek shelter. There are peaceful and magnanimous saints who live like the spring season for the good of humanity. They have crossed the dreadful ocean of finite existence through their own efforts and with no ulterior motive whatsoever, they help others to cross it as well. Just as the moon of its own accord cools the earth that has been scorched by the flaming rays of the sun, in the same way, it is indeed the nature of the magnanimous people to remove the troubles of others. O Lord, your nectarine speech that has been sweetened by the elixir of the bliss of Brahm, speech that is pure, speech that is cooling, speech that flows in streams from your lips, just as water flows out of a jug and which speech is ple pleasing to the ear, do you, O Lord, shower upon me, who am tormented by earthly afflictions, as if by the flames of a forest fire. Shower your nectar-like speech on me, and a glance of your gracious eyes. Blessed are those who have received even a passing glance from your eyes, accepting them under your protection. How to cross the ocean of relative existence? What is to be my ultimate destination? Which of the many ways should I adopt? I know nothing of these, O Lord. Save me and describe to me in full detail how to, the, how to end the misery of this life in the finite existence. As the disciple who is afflicted by the conflagration of the fire of the sansar, of the fire of the world, and who is seeking protection from it, as he speaks, the teacher looks at him in all pity and kindness and spontaneously bestows upon him protection from fear. To the seeker who has a burning desire for liberation, who abides by all scriptural injunctions, who has a serene mind and who is endowed with tranquility and who has sought refuge in the teacher, the teacher with utmost kindness should impart all knowledge to such seeker. The teacher, the guru says to the disciple, Fear not, O learned one, there is no danger whatsoever for you. There is indeed a way to cross over the ocean of change. I shall instruct you and tell you about that very path to the beyond, on which path the ancient rishis walked to attain their goal. There is a supreme means by which you can put an end to the fear of relative existence that plagues you. And it is by that means that you will cross the sea of relative existence of the sansar and attain supreme bliss. And what is the means of acquiring the highest knowledge? And how does a person acquire this highest knowledge? Know that this highest knowledge arises in a person from the sincere contemplation upon the true meaning of the mantras of the Upanishads. By this knowledge, all the sorrows that are born of the perception of change, all such sorrows get totally annihilated. Faith, devotion, and the practice of meditation 
these three are mentioned in the songs of the Shrutis as the chief factors that help a seeker to attain liberation. Whosoever follows these is liberated from bondage of the body, which is just a projection on a person's Atma that arises out of a person's spiritual ignorance. It is indeed because of ignorance that you, who are the Supreme Self, who are the Paramatma, that you experience a self to be under the bondage of the not-self, under the bondage of that what is not the Atma. It is from this misunderstanding alone that the worlds of births and deaths proceeds. The worlds of births and deaths are only there because of this understanding. When, however, through discrimination between what is the Self or the Atma and what is not the Self or the Atma, when through this discrimination true knowledge arises in a person, then all the effects of ignorance right from the roots up to its trunk and all its branches, they are all burnt down by the blaze of that knowledge. Ignorance is completely destroyed. Hearing the words of the teacher, some questions arise in the mind of the seeker disciple, who then asks, O oh Master, certain questions have arisen in my mind. Kindly listen to these questions that have arisen in my mind. Hearing the answers to these questions, I know, I shall completely feel satisfied. These are my questions, Master. What is bondage? How has this bondage come? How does it continue to exist? How can a person get out of this bondage completely? What is the not-self? Who is the Supreme Self or the Paramatma? And what is the process of discrimination between what is the Self and what is the non-Self or what is the not-Self? Please explain all these to me in detail. To the questions of the disciple, this is how the teacher replies. You are indeed blessed for you wish to attain the absolute Brahm by freeing yourself from the bondage of ignorance. By this desire of yours alone, you have fulfilled your life and you have glorified your clan. Listen carefully to what I have to tell you. When a father is in financial debts, he has his sons and others to save him from such debts. But if the same father suffers from delusion, then his sons and others cannot help him to get rid of that delusion. If he has to redeem himself from his delusions, then for the father, there is none but himself who can help him. He must do so himself. Similarly, if a person is exhausted and fatigued because of the load that he carries on his head, his exhaustion and fatigue can be relieved by others who may come to his help to carry the load. However, if a person is suffering from the pangs of hunger and thirst, then those pangs of hunger and thirst can only be removed by the person himself alone. It is he who has to eat food and drink water to ease those pangs of hunger and thirst. Another person eating food and water cannot ease his pangs of hunger and thirst. Similarly, when a person is ill, the doctor prescribes food and medicine for him. If the patient faithfully follows the diet and takes the proper medicine as prescribed by the doctor, this alone will help him recover from his illness. However, if in place of the patient, 
someone else were to take the medicine and undergo treatment, the patient would never recover. The patient himself must undergo treatment if he is to recover from his illness. Understand that there are certain things that have to be done personally by the person himself. Others doing them can be of no help. The actuality of things, what things actually are, the actuality of things is to be known only by a first-hand personal experience through the eye of clear understanding by the person himself. It cannot be known through the reports of learned men. It cannot be known through listening to learned men. A person must experience for himself what things actually are. He just cannot rely on the experience of others. The beauty of the moon is enjoyed through one's own eyes. Can one appreciate it when others describe it to him? Who else but one's own self can help rid oneself of the bondage that is caused by the chains of ignorance, of desire, of action and the like, even in a hundred crore kalpas or aeons. Remember, only you yourself can rid yourself of the bondage that is caused by the chains of ignorance, of desire, of actions and the like. Know for certain that liberation is not possible through yoga. Liberation is not possible through Sankhya. Liberation is not possible through rituals. Nor is liberation possible through learning. Then, how is liberation possible? Liberation is possible only and only through the realization of one's identity with Brahm. That is, realizing that you yourself are Brahm. This is the only way that is possible for liberation. Yes, realizing that you yourself are Brahm is the only way that liberation is possible. This concludes the second part of Vivek Chudamani, Upanish, of Vivek Chudamani consisting of verses 28 to 56. Om. Shanti, 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 Om.